Hey there, Vault Dwellers, Nick at Vault Dweller here, and in this video we're going to cover the basics of setting up a vendor in your camp and cover some tips and tricks that you may or may not know about. And speaking of tips and tricks, if you like how-tos and walkthroughs with the occasional poorly executed dad joke, then you might be in the right place. So go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below, and while you're at it, give the video a thumbs up. Lastly, if you hit that notification icon, you'll know when I release a new video. Okay, so you're new to Fallout 76 or you're a seasoned veteran. Whatever the case is, I believe this video will help a lot of people out. Now before we get started, if you're here looking for vendor prices, I'm not going to have anything readily available for you. Those things change from time to time and there's just no way to keep up with them. Now I'm going to post some links down in the description of this video that might show you some vendor prices that you can use for more commonly used items. Otherwise, stick around, I'm going to show you how to set up your vendor and perhaps even get better sales out of your vendor over time. And first and foremost, there's some things we're going to need to tackle first. When it comes to vendor sales, it's all about location, location, location. Consider where you want to place your vendor and what kind of traffic you're going to see and how easily it's going to be recognized. Now for the hardcore buyers that want to buy stuff from vendors, they're going to travel no matter what the distance is. But when you start looking at new players, they're not going to have the caps to be able to move around as well as some of the veteran players that are out there. Now at the making of this video, there's four locations that are free travel spots. That's going to be the Crater, Fort Atlas, Vault 76, and Foundation. While Vault 76 is a great location to travel to, a lot of new players coming out of the vault do not have any caps at all. In fact, all they want to do is start setting out into the world and explore. So if you set up a camp near Vault 76, chances are you're not going to see a lot of revenue coming in. If you travel all the way up to the top of the map north, you'll find Crater, which is another great free travel location. One of the biggest problems I have with Crater is that once a Fallout 76 player completes the Wastelanders quest line, a lot of times they don't travel that much back to it unless they absolutely have to. Crater is also located in Toxic Valley, which is not exactly the ideal place to set up a camp for, you know, beauty and nice things. Next, let's jump over to Fort Atlas. And Fort Atlas is actually a pretty good place to travel to right now because a lot of people are going to it. But once the Brotherhood of Steel dies down, I'm not sure how many people are going to be traveling to Fort Atlas afterwards. Here, the location is pretty nice and you have pretty good terrain around it. So you can do a lot of things in this area. But again, I'm not sure if this is going to be ideal if you want to set up a vendor here. And the last place we're going to look at, and it's the place where I have been since Wastelanders, is right around here in Foundation. A lot of Fallout 76 players visit this area every day, and it's also a really good location if you have a camp that you want to show off. If you set up your camp as close as you can to Foundation, all a player would have to do is just jump over to your camp once they make their free travel over to Foundation. And who would pass that up? Alright, so we've settled on a location. Mine's going to be relatively close to Foundation because I want to sell a lot of stuff. So what's next? Recently, Bethesda's added to the game multiple camp locations where we can set up for Fallout 76. This means that we're not tied down to one location like we have been for the last two years. Whoopee! Having multiple camp locations doesn't mean that you have to set up your vendor for each location. Once you set up your vendor, it traverses all your other camp locations, no matter how many you have. And just to note, you can only have one camp location active at a time. Alright, so we've decided on a location to place our vendors. Great. What we're going to want to do is turn our camp icon on. It doesn't matter if your vendor's got power to it or not. If your camp icon is not set to on, nobody's going to know that you have something to sell. Next, you're going to want to access your camp menu and slide all the way over to where it says vendors and select the vendor you have available to sell from. Now, depending on how many plans you know for vendors, you may only have just one. And that's okay because they all sell the same things. And remember, you don't have to have power to set up these vendors. I have my power turned on just because I want it to look, you know, normal. Once you've placed your vendor, go ahead and access it. You'll see in the top right hand corner where it says vendor slots used, mine's 43 of 120. In the past, you could sell as many as 30 items on a vendor and have as many as four vendors running at one time. Since then, Bethesda's decided that they would combine all the vendor items and make them underneath one location so that way you didn't have to have as many vendors if you didn't want them. Now it's nice to have more than one vendor placed in your camp. That way if you have more than one person visiting your camp to purchase stuff, one is not waiting on the other. Thus, more sales for you. Okay, looking at the vendor menu, you're going to see your current inventory that's on your character right now on the left hand side, denoted by My Inventory. And on the right hand side, you're going to see Vending Machine. This is stuff that's already loaded onto your vending machine, plus it's going to include the stuff that's inside your stash. And down here at the bottom, you're going to have your command bar for Sell, Inspect, Sort, 
show marked only and exit. And this command bar is going to change periodically as you do stuff inside your vendor, so pay attention to it. In the middle there, you're going to see a graphic for some notebook paper or something. That's actually the known plan balloon arch that's on the left-hand side highlighted. And as you cycle through your inventory and stash, anything you select will show up there in the middle. And if you want to get a closer look at it, look down at your command bar again and choose the inspect option. Now looking at the command bar that's at the top where it shows inventory, favorites, weapons, armor, so on and so forth, just like it does in your stash, I've found that it attracts more people when you have at least one thing of everything up there from that command bar at the top. So even if you're not keen on selling any of your junk or ammunition, place something in there that's less valuable just so that maybe it would get someone's attention to come there and look around. Because they may not just be looking for junk or miscellaneous stuff. They may be looking for a weapon, they just don't know it yet. When you start going through your inventory and your stash, you'll start seeing the command bar at the bottom change a little bit where you'll see the options to take and assign. If you select a take option, it actually takes it off the vendor from being sold. Likewise, if you select the assign option, you can assign something to be sold on the vendor. If you have an item already that you want to sell on your vendor, go ahead and assign it. And the next thing it's going to ask you is how many caps you want to sell it for. Now at this point, this slider bar will actually go all the way to 40,000, but I'm not going to sell this for 40,000. Respectfully, if you're also selling ammunition or stacked items, it's going to ask you how many of those items you want to sell before it asks you for the cap price. Now once you've assigned your item to your vendor, everybody in the world will be able to see it as long as your camp icon is turned on. Okay, so you have the question, Naked, why do you have so many items in your inventory just labeled with prices? Okay, so this is kind of a shortcut for me. If I have stuff that I want to sell on my stash, but I don't want to sell it right now on my vendor, I'll go ahead and look up the price of what it is currently. And then I'll change the name of the item to the price that I want to sell it for minus 500 caps. That way I don't have to put everything on my vendor all at once, and that way I don't have to worry about ever maxing out my cap just in case I'm out doing something and someone decides to buy everything from me. I'll also place a link down in the description for Fed76 which helps me sell weapons and armor. Okay, so now that you have your vendor set up, what are you going to do next? Okay, so you want to make sure that when people travel to your camp, they know exactly where your vendor is located. And I can't begin to tell you how many times I've gone vendor hopping before and not be able to find a vendor at someone's camp only because they had it put in an illogical spot. Now, as a best practice, you want to try to put your vendor somewhere where it's going to be seen relatively easily. If you've got it in your house, upstairs, behind a bookshelf, chances are people aren't going to find it easily. So use signs and arrows to direct a potential buyer to your vendor so that way they'll get in and get out and the next buyer will come along and do the same thing. Lastly, and I think one of the most important things is setting up your camp so that your spawn location to your camp is exactly where you want it to be. Where somebody spawns into your camp is directly related to where you place your camp. I try to position my camp so that whenever somebody comes to my camp to purchase from my vendor, they land exactly where they need to go so they'll go exactly to where they need to be. Now this is kind of a hit or miss thing and you may have to travel to your camp a couple times to get it straight, but once you have it, everybody will thank you for it silently. And there's nothing worse than going to someone's camp and not being able to find their vendor to only find their vendor five minutes later for ammunition you were looking for to only turn out that they've only have 44 ammunition and you don't have any guns that use 44 ammunition. So make it easy on them so it's easy on you. So what's your thought on vendors? Do you have a camp location that you'd like to share with everybody that does really well for you? Leave us a comment down below and let us know what you think. And while you're thinking about that, imagine you walking into a bar and there's a long line of people waiting to take a swing at you. That's called the punchline. And that's it for me, Vault Dwellers. Don't forget to like the video and we'll see you next time. Take care. See where she landed. I just jumped on top of this thing and she landed right there with me. What is it doing?